What is good, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy Foxy. Welcome back to the Foxy's Den. Getting into another reaction, another episode of Solo Leveling. Just dropped this past weekend. What is this? A picnic? That's the episode title. I don't know what the fuck we're getting into this episode. I'm hoping maybe just a little bit of happy go lucky for a little bit. Maybe Sung Ji Woo can actually enjoy himself a little bit because we got a little bit of a cliffhanger on maybe, you know, Joe He and him going on a date possibly. At least that's what I thought, maybe, because Joe He brought out that um what is it called is it mana crystal is it a mana crystal or some sort of crystal that you get out of the dungeons i can't remember if it's a mana crystal or if, if it's called something else i know it's used for to create stronger weapons or to be sold for currency and it can also be a great power source and whatnot it's we learned about these crystals early on i just can't remember if it's mana or called something else but regardless she brought that one out that uh sung jin woo gave her in that first dungeon way back in episode one and two and she was like do you remember this and then like the episode ends so i'm assuming maybe hopefully we get into some sort of like you know little happy-go-lucky moment with them and that's just like where we you know are at for this episode and sung jin woo actually just gets some chill time because he's been going hard for a while and you know he's trying to level up he's trying to get stronger he wants to accomplish his goals and get as strong as quickly as possible so we can go and tackle that castle in that one instance dungeon to possibly find the ingredients for the elixir of life and save his mom i know that's his number one goal taking taking it off the gas a little bit and just enjoying yourself for a second wouldn't be too bad you know what i'm saying keep the sanity up a little bit especially with all the shit that he's been going through i mean he fucking had to deal with huang and these you know corrupt motherfuckers whenever he went into that dungeon with yo jin ho a couple episodes ago and then this last dungeon of course you know it's kind of an awkward reunion Kim actually had some character development and really wanted to apologize, you know, very honorably, you know what I'm saying? Like, he did want to face his uh, shamefulness and, and wanted to apologize to Sung Jin Woo, and he, he did, but it was just, it just so happened to be on his deathbed, uh, all because of our boy Kang, I think, or it might be pronounced Kong, something like that. But anyways, he was an assassin-type hunter, and he's from the Hunters Association. He was actually under the supervision of the one guy that i mean they both came to visit sung jin woo right after that first dungeon in the beginning of the show when he was still pretty weak and didn't really know what was going on with his you know this game power yet and so he came in to oversee these criminals that were helping out in this dungeon but really he was paid by somebody to kill those prisoners because they apparently assaulted his daughter and she it kind of forced her to commit suicide because she just couldn't deal with the trauma and so obviously the dad wanted revenge or you know was very frustrated very fucking mad obviously anybody would be he just acted upon those frustrations and hired somebody to, to kill them and he accepted it of course but don't, he told him don't get the wrong idea i'm doing this for me because he finds pleasure in killing people more than beasts so as you can see throughout the, all the episodes that we watch of solo leveling there's a lot of corrupt motherfuckers and dirty people in the, in this fucking universe. Like, you know, it's, it's not something I was really expecting, I guess, when we first got into this, but now it's become kind of a regular thing where, like, you either have people that are actually honorable and do the things that they need to do in an honorable way, or you have people that are going to try and cheat the system and, and do what they want to do for their own advantage, which seems to be pretty prevalent. And so we saw Song Jin Woo take on Kong last episode and handle him pretty swiftly and uh they were it was a very interesting fight and very badass because both of them were kind of the same type of hunter like this assassin type hunter with small daggers very fast it just it so happens that sung Woo had the advantage because he has this power that nobody else has where he can get stronger and has multiple things that help him like he can heal himself with full recovery you know he can he has debuffs in his weapon and shit you know this is all stuff that kong was being like like really thrown off with whenever he was fighting him like i've never seen anything like this but of course you're not gonna fucking stand up and lose uh uh win against somebody like that and so i guess he just accepted his death and he was like yeah you better be careful you're gonna have a you know long shadow following you and uh and i think that just foreshadows that this is not this is just the tip of the iceberg with some of the situations that Sung Jin Woo is going to get into. And then, of course, that guy after the dungeon comes and talks and gets information. And, you know, obviously the pressing matter was who took out Kong. And Song, our, our lovely um, character that is just so nice and, and so selfless, 
he went ahead and, and, and covered for Sung Jin Woo. He was like, I was the one that took him down. And obviously I had help from this healer. So that's how we were able to get it done. And then that kind of, you know, takes the light off of Sung Jin Woo in that moment and uh, kind of protects his secret for a little bit. And um, yeah, that's where we're at. But I don't think he's going to be able to hold that secret forever. And I'm just curious when that's actually going to be, you know, like when this, like when he's going to, it's going to be, it's going to be at some point in the show. At some point in this story, his secret is he's not going to be able to hold it for any longer. And I wonder what the Hunter Association or regular people that aren't really affiliated with Sung Jin Woo because obviously like he might be able to open up to Joe He or open up the song like people he knows that aren't going to fucking do him dirty you know maybe he can open up to them about it obviously he's not going to if he doesn't feel comfortable but that would be an ideal scenario where people won't judge him from the outside whereas the Hunter Association other people that he doesn't know that are also hunters they're going to look at him and, and, and just start questioning maybe be jealous you know have, be envy of what he has or um, at the end of the day, just he's going to have a lot of attention on him. So I'm wondering when that secret is going to come out, but we don't know yet. But that's pretty much where we're at. I'm excited to get in this episode, getting the reaction. If you guys enjoy it, please like down below, comment, subscribe if you're new, hit the notification bell so you know the next one's dropping. Let's get into it. Solo leveling, episode 10. <laughs> She's starting to notice the differences in both of them. She's like, yeah, I'm timid and I can't really deal with these situations yet. You've changed so much. I mean, yeah, he survived some crazy shit. Oh, wow. She's made up her mind. Well, I wasn't really expecting this, but I mean, I'm glad that she at least made up her mind because she was so back and forth on what she really wanted to do. She finally decided like, all right, you know, this isn't for me. She can't, she obviously was struggling dealing with all that stress. Yep. We saw a little sneak peek of uh, Huang Dosu. Yeah, exactly. He doesn't care about the ins and outs or what or how corrupt his brother was. Like, it's just the fact that he was that's his brother and he died and, and somehow you survived. So I'm going to come for your ass. I'd recommend taking your family and leaving the country, bro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I knew he was gonna think like that. It's just one more fucking reason why I gotta fucking level the fuck up, baby. All right, into the opening we go. Fire, bro. Let's get it, baby. Come on. We get into some C rank dungeons finally, or what's up? All right, yeah, they're together. That girl in the hoodie. I think that girl in the hoodie is uh, fucking uh, Sung Jin Woo's sister's classmate that registered to be a hunter a minute ago and early on in the season. Mm -hmm. Three million just for waiting outside? Hey, I'll fucking take that shit, baby. Go ahead, dog. Go, go in there. You know what I'm saying? Especially since if, if you already knew what Sung Joon Woo was capable of, they don't know what he's capable of. But I do. If I was sitting there and I knew what Sung Joon Woo was capable of, oh, hell yeah, baby. I'm getting three mil today. Oh, 
So oh, okay. He gains that skill for using the stone. Does it last forever, though? Or is it only for a little bit? You have learned skill stealth. Okay, all right, yeah, so he just has it now. He just had to use the stone. God damn, Jinho, what armor you got now, bro? Like, yeah, what do you need all this armor for, R, when you're not even gonna really be the one doing shit, bro? You can't even get up. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, he's gonna keep the helmet on. <laughs> he's like, yo, can I at least wear the helmet, bruh? This motherfucker's just getting drunk, too. Yeah, he like, he's alright. I mean, yeah, they don't, I mean, they don't know what Sanji was capable of, so they're, obviously they're expecting the worst outcome. See? Mm-hmm. That's her classmate. I knew it. Would take at least two hours. Oh, and they're done already. We didn't even see what the fuck was going on in there. <laughs> He's just walking out all nice and calm. And they're gonna start realizing, like, yo, this guy is something different, bro, yo! I love this shit, bro. They were just like, yeah, it's been an hour, usually takes two hours. They come out, it's done. And she knows that that's her friend's brother. She knows. Oh my god, bro, yo. He's just getting all the materials and all the money and shit in these, in these dungeons while he's taking on all the enemies. I fucking love this shit, baby! Is this a picnic or what, bro? Come on! <laughs> keep on leveling up. And they just keep witnessing them continuing to beat these dungeons. They're like, these, these two are literally doing it by themselves. But it's not Yojin Ho's just getting the materials and shit. It's really just one person completing these C-ranked dungeons by himself. Ooh, that stealth skill he gained! Nah, he wasn't hiding it. He killed somebody for that shit, baby. Obviously, he was threatened. He didn't just kill him to kill him. Ooh, dash leveled up. Alright, even faster now. What you trying to sneak up on me for? Eh, it was a mistake, big dog. He's getting new skills as he's, as he's leveling up too. Like, yo, nah. This is lit, bro. Ah, uh, and he's up his mana. Mmm, needs to level up some intellect going forward for a little bit. He's somewhere between B and A, okay. Yeah, nah, you need to level up more. Don't don't get too cocky. Just keep leveling up. This is good momentum. Re reach the required level? Job change quest. They're getting fucking done. 150 million. Their whole lineup seems thrown together. I have no idea what the plan is. Yep. Okay, see? Someone's getting attention on this. Mm-hmm. Mm, is this a journalist, like, publication, like, place? He's like, I can smell something to write about here. I can smell something. Some gossip, baby. She's starting to fall in love with him. She's blushing and shit, bro. She's like, damn, this dude's badass. He's doing this shit all by himself. So nonchalant, too. Like, he literally just walks out of the dungeon with his fucking hands in his pockets. He's like, yeah, just another fucking day. Just another day of kicking ass, baby. <laughs> Is that he reawakened? So more people are starting to realize, yeah, like Sung Jun Woo 
You're getting a lot of attention on you, bro. A promising rookie. Oh, wow. He's going to try and recruit uh, Sung Jin Woo? What is this? A picnic? There's, this, there's the episode title. That's where it comes from because everybody else is just hanging out here. Mm, you got some big pants on for not going into any of these dungeons. You have no experience. Oh, wow. He's figuring this out quickly. Another dungeon down. How many have we done in this one episode? Yeah, they're paying attention. They just stayed around the corner. And they definitely noticed that Sung Jin Woo seems to be the one in charge. He's like, yeah, let's just delay them for now. You know what I'm saying? What is this? What is going on here? Someone dreaming? Oh, it's him. Oh. Is he thinking back is, is he thinking back to that island? Because we saw insects in that little dream he's having. Damn, bro. Something traumatic happened on that island. Because same thing with the other dude, the brute guy. Fucking looks like some people got left behind and uh, that he knew. Some people that he knows got left behind or died. Top secret. So they're about to go. They're about, they're about to go back to that island. Somehow, I feel like Sung Joo Woo is gonna be able to get on this island somehow too. Ah, the White Tiger Guild. Yeah, it's one of the top five. There's like, bit, like there's like a big five of guilds in the country. Yeah, but he already has a deal with Yojin Construction. あ、えっと、だいたい500億ほどでしょうか。ユジン建設が報酬として提示してきたのは300億のビルです。その2倍とおっしゃったので、500億のビルをいただけるのかと思いました。And that's not even exactly double. That's a little under double. Yeah. Get a little ahead of yourself, too. Yeah, damn. He didn't know that info. Mm -hmm. それなら友人検察が提示した金額にも納得がいく。何の調査したことは申し訳ありません。ですが、悪意があったわけではないのです。振り返らない。形式上、ギルド長に報告する義務がありますが、私も死にたくはありません。部下にもしっかり口止めし
Oh hell yeah, bro. Yeah, now now he's even more like impressed. Like, yo, this guy is even bigger than I thought he was gonna be, bro. This guy's really gonna be something. He tricked you. <laughs> oh damn. I'll forget the fact that you spied on me. We're even now. So he, he scammed him just to let him know, like, okay, that's what you get for snooping around a little too much. You know what I'm saying? Like, because he's trying to keep that low profile. He's got his contact info now. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Yo, I'm fucking with this, baby. Come on. Don't tell me the episode's gonna end, bro. Ah, oh, come on, bro. Come on. Nah, I was loving that, dude. That was a good episode, bro. Fuck. That was really good. That was really fucking good. I'm, I'm liking it. I'm liking where this direction is going, bro. Like, Sung Joo Woo is just in control, bro. Like, my man knows what he's doing. I love it. Alrighty, guys. What another amazing episode of... Uh, what the fuck? Uh, dude, I'm blanking. Holy shit. Solo leveling. God damn. What the hell was that? So leveling another amazing episode episode 10 that was a lot of fun to watch i mean it wasn't like super crazy action or anything it was more of just like okay sung joo woo is that guy <laughs> pretty much that's what we got through the vibe of this episode is you know he really started to tackle these c rank dungeons with yojin ho and is doing it in a very fast fashion so we get this quota of people like we meet the quota of people that you know need to like come along for this these dungeons so they can at least have the quota to be able to enter it regardless so all they need to do is have those people there and they don't even need to go inside the dungeon i thought like they all had to come inside the dungeon and he's gonna have to like it, it's gonna be a little bit more of a challenge because he's gonna have to keep watch over everybody and you know people could die if they don't know what they're doing uh especially low rank hunters like they have uh, acquired in this little group that sits on the outside while Yojin Ho and Sung Jin will go on the inside of the dungeons. You know, some of them, you know, it seems like most of them are low rank. Some of them maybe, some of them maybe do have a little bit of experience, but then definitely for sure, uh, we saw Sung Jin Woo's sister's friend that uh, she goes to school with. You know, she, we, we saw her get her hunter ranking uh or she awakened you know what i'm saying she got like you know her her rating uh for her uh hunter ranking early on in this season and we've seen her question about you know like to sung jin woo's sister like what sung jin woo like yo he's a hunter right and like so the conversation has at least come up before uh between the two of them and so we see i, I know i noticed it immediately as soon as we got into the beginning of the episode and we saw like the little group that yojin ho had acquired and you could see her in the background immediately and they, and they did that on purpose just to see if people would notice if you remember who that person is and it's like oh shit that's sung jin woo's sister's friend and so sure enough she's kind of you know she's kind of assertive she's you know thinks she's you know She's not trying to show her weakness, I guess you could say, or like how weak she really is. You know what I'm saying? She's trying to be confident, which is all good things, right? Obviously, she doesn't really know what Sung Jin Woo was capable of. And none of this, for that matter, none of this group knew what he was capable of, or Yo Jin Ho, for that matter, either, uh, and what's really going on between them. But like, they just kind of are going with the flow. And they're like, okay, so you guys are going to go in this dungeon by yourselves and take care of it. And all we have to do is sit out here and we're going to get paid $3 million each. Just for sitting out here and being here like, okay whatever you say and so they go into the first dungeon and we don't even see what happens in there like that's how quick work he sung jin woo makes of this thing or all of these dungeons for that matter and he's leveling up constantly as he's doing this he's unlocking new skills he's upgrading his already established skills he gained that stealth skill which all he had to do was crush that stone and use it and that now he just has the skill you know indefinitely and so he goes into that first dungeon and everybody's like questioning like, hey, I don't know what the fuck they're fucking on, bro. But just two of these motherfuckers, an E rank and a D rank taking on a C rank dungeon. Like that one guy that was sipping, that's always constantly sipping on his alcohol. He's like, these greenhorns don't know what the fuck they're doing. And then the rest of the, you know, group is just kind of like, you know, making their guesses or like just kind of understanding like what's really going on or like, you know, making their hypothetical guesses and whatnot while they're in there. And one of them mentions, yeah, it usually takes about two hours, you know, for a raid team or a strike team, whatever, to complete a dungeon. And it's only been an hour, so we can expect to be waiting a little bit longer. And then as soon as, right after he's done saying that, they come out of the fucking dungeon. Handle it in just about an hour, flat. That's it, that's it, that's all I needed. That shit is so fucking wild, bro. And it just, it just, it just gives even more to this aura that Sung Jin Woo has and how 
badass he is and how much he keeps leveling up and how he's truly getting stronger. And it, it, it makes it more exciting that regular people or regular hunters are able to witness this and they don't even really know what's going on. But we do, right? The audience does, which is just fucking amazing. Like it just makes it so much more fun to watch. And as you can see, everybody that was out there, once they come out, like after that dude said that after an hour and they're like, oh, look, the gate's closing. They, they fucking did it. And everybody's looking around like they're just kind of shocked and they're, you know, their mouths are, are wide open. They're like, oh, they did it. You know what I'm saying? Just the two of them. But it's really just one person. Yojin Ho is the one that's just getting all the mining materials and like mana crystals that are in there that's worth money to also gain, you know, as much money and profit as you can throughout those dungeons, not only from you know, defeating the monsters and stuff, but getting all those materials. So Yojin Ho is in charge of getting the materials and mining all that stuff, while Sung Jin Woo takes out all the enemies, protects Yojin Ho, and takes out the boss and all that stuff. So it's really a good beneficial relationship between the both of them because they're both acquiring money. Sung Jin Woo's leveling up through every dungeon and also for the group too, because all they have to do is sit outside and they're getting 3 million each per fucking dungeon. So it's 19 dungeons. 19 times 3, that's basically 20, so a little under 60 mil. Like 57, 56, something like that. 58 maybe, I don't fucking know, but a little under 60 mil that they're getting just for sitting outside. You know they're souped, bro. At least, you know, most of the motherfuckers, or pretty pretty much all of them, I feel like, but I feel like maybe, like, uh, Sung Jin Woo's sister's friend uh, might be a little bit eager. Like, she seems eager and confident that, like, she wants to show off that she's that she can be a hunter too, right? But she hasn't had a chance to prove herself and she has no experience whatsoever. So she, she doesn't even really know what a dungeon's like. I don't think she's even been in one yet. So she's been able to, she, she just got lucky enough to get chosen in this, you know, quota where she's getting free bread, but I feel like she wants more than that. But she's still, but, but the more and more that she realizes like these two are really doing this after every dungeon we go to, She's like almost starting to fall for Sung Jin Woo, especially that one time where she was like kind of like really paying attention to him when he came out of the dungeon. He noticed because of his perception skill. Like, yo, what's the matter? And she's just like nothing. And she kind of like looks down and blushes. So I feel like she might low key be falling for him or at the very least is just interested in him because she's like, as everybody else is noticing, like this guy is really doing this. Like it's two motherfuckers going into that dungeon and they can, I'm sure by now tell that Yo Jin Ho is not really the one that's doing all the fighting. You know, because he's the one that's carrying the materials and always comes back with the materials and this and that. And Sung Jin Woo comes out of the dungeon every time, hands in pocket, like just handle business. Like it's uh, literally like a, like a fucking picnic, like this episode title, bro. It's a picnic. He just coming out, you know, I just got done having a nice ham and cheese sandwich. Still got a boss or two. We good. <laughs> so the fact that he's doing that so effortlessly, I think is why, she, you know, he's gaining the interest of her, uh, his sister's friend. And I mean, who wouldn't, right? So that's very interesting in itself. And, and seeing them knock out these dungeons so swiftly is fucking just amazing. Like, it's just so fun to watch. Like, you're, we're not even really seeing much of the, like, fighting and, and whatnot going on in these dungeons. Like, it's like I like the pacing of it. Like, it, 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 it's meant to show that Sung Jin Woo is really like that. Like, these C ranks are not really a challenge for him, but it's enough for him to have momentum to level up and get stronger efficiently, uh, which is the entire goal of this. So that was pretty much most of the episode, but the other factor that we had is that some company, you know, some manager from the White Tigers Guild started noticing that there's a lot of, you know, reservations on these C rank, or C, C rank gates. And they're like, damn, who's buying them all up? And it's, um, they realize that it's Yojin Construction Company. And then they see that the leader or the, like this leader that's, you know, reserving them is Yojin Ho. It's like, okay, he's a D rank. And then they see the list of people that is on, you know, on these, on these, uh, on the, on the strike team and he recognizes the name Sung Jin Woo he's like I swear I recognize that from the the double the double dungeon that happened like earlier like a couple weeks ago or however long it was ago he, he recognizes the name from that he's like hmm he has like this intuition that like this is going to be somebody very important soon and he's like trying to go ahead and jump the gun and, and, and recruit him because that could give him like a good bonus maybe he gets compensation or whatever the word is um commission for recruiting him for for being a good rookie and you know it, obviously if he continues to perform if he did recruit him for the white tiger guild he you know that's that probably 
ramp up his commission even more. So he noticed those things and, and, and saw uh, like a chance to be able to try and recruit him. And that's exactly what he tried to do. Went to go see one of the, uh, uh, the went to go see this, uh, the strike team and how they were all sitting outside. And he's like, what is this, a picnic? And that's where the episode title comes from. Because they're all just leisuring outside while there's two in there. And so they kind of just leave, and, and but they like stay for a second. And sure enough, Sung Jin Woo and Yo Jin Ho come out. And they kind of, you know, witness the conversation that Yo Jin Ho and, and Sung Jin Woo had. And it's kind of obvious that Sung Jin Woo is the one calling the shots because Yo Jin Ho is like, yo, uh, Sung Jin Woo had like some plans or something. So he's like, oh, you know, like, can I have the tomorrow off? And Yo Jin Ho's like, okay, well, we have him for two more days. And then Sung Jin Woo was like, okay, that's fine. Yeah, let's just delay it you know one more day so i can have to, you know tomorrow free and it seems like he's you know he's driving his car he's on the way somewhere at the end of the episode i'm assuming he's going to go visit Johi if i had to guess since he promised that he would take her out again if he's around that area so i think he's just going to do that out of uh his good heart and um also just you know he he promised her that he would take her out at some point so i think he's just you know finally uh following through with that promise and it's a nice little just getaway just to have some fun for for once so they witness that conversation and then at some point uh the manager approaches him they have a conversation in the cafe and sung Ju woo literally leads and holds that conversation in his control the whole time uh while kind of showing what he's capable of to the manager and 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 kind of intimidating him enough to where it's like okay you better keep your fucking mouth shut and also your subordinate who else knows about me you know all the questions that he wanted answered he got answered and made sure that you know he could still keep a low profile while also scamming the guy for three c rank dungeons that they were going to delay but actually sold to them for a way raked up price and then he messaged them as they noticed that they got scammed and he was like okay this makes us even for you snooping around basically because he wants to keep a low profile so he just kind of taught him a lesson like all right we're good now you know what i'm saying i trust you you know you got scammed sorry but that's the price you pay for trying to you know snoop around on my uh, existence or, or whatever my background and uh the manager was <laughs> like kind of impressed and just shocked in the fact that he was that sung Ju was actually capable of doing that and like how strong he really is the skills he noticed uh the cut that he healed with that healing potion you know he, he was just pretty much satisfied with the fact i have his contact info now like that's a win if you ask me you know what i'm saying so that's pretty much where I left off with that. And then we see him in his Jeep, you know, going uh, to somewhere, which I'm assuming he's going to go on a little uh, date or just have a day uh, to hang out with Joey, I think. So I am very excited for next episode to see him just have a, an enjoying day off of Joey. I, I, I'm assuming hopefully everything just goes smooth and, you know, nothing goes awry or you know they don't get attacked or something because obviously you know like he's being warned like there's gonna be a lot of attention on you and he was warned by that dude that came to visit him in the hospital like after he was you know he talked to him one-on-one -on -one a little bit after uh the the kang incident where he was like yeah uh Hu huang dong su who's an s-rank hunter you know he has his eyes on you you know what i'm saying so he recommended him like you might want to get gather your family up and leave the country type shit like that's how much he knows that Wong Do Su, like he don't give a fuck what his brother was doing. He might even be aware of that. He's probably completely ignorant of his brother's actions and his corruptness. I mean, it's from what the little look we got on Wong Do Su's personality in general. It seems like he might be also kind of like a corrupt cock. I mean, he just seems like a cocky motherfucker. So he might also be corrupt and just kind of do things the way that he does, and, he, and nobody can do anything about it because he's an S rank fucking strong ass motherfucker. That's why he kind of recommended him, like, hey, you might want to leave the country, bro. But Sung Jin Woo saw it as, like, that's even more reason for me to keep getting stronger if someone's after me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to fucking just hightail it out of here and and give up on what I've already been doing. You know what I'm saying? Like, nah, fuck that. So, like, that gives him even more reason to get stronger. But then again, like, still, like, we saw throughout this episode, like, how much more attention he's getting as the time goes on. And eventually, like I said, at some point, I feel like he's not going to be able to keep this secret. And I wonder what the reaction is going to be in terms of the general public, uh, hunters alike, the Hunters Association, uh, you name it. And, you know, what's going to be the general consensus on like him and his secret and his power and, you know, uh, what, the, what the reception is going to be. If it's like if he's going to have fans, sort of, so to speak, because some S-rank hunters are obviously very popular and kind of have like a fan base so to speak you know like a reputation that's not necessarily bad but just like a lot of eyes and a lot of people like him or likes whoever that's an s rank maybe he gets that same treatment or maybe he doesn't because he didn't 
you know, it's not, he, he's not naturally an S-rank hunter. You know what I'm saying? Like if his secret gets out, you know, maybe they're just interested and they find that cool and interesting in itself, or maybe people are, you know, jealous and envious and, and, you know, take it the wrong way. And he has negative attention surrounding him. It could go either way, but at some point that secret's going to come out. So that's where we're at. What an amazing episode. This shit is so fucking addicting to watch. I fucking love it. Amazing, amazing as usual. That's going to do it for me in this reaction. If you guys enjoyed it, please leave a like down below. Comment, subscribe for new. Hit that notification bell so the next one's dropping. I'll see you on the next one. Y'all be good. Deuces.